system review time and this week we've got the Memotech MTX512 the boring bit specifications uh, it's got a Zilog Z80A CPU running at 4 megahertz which was a decent speed for a CPU at the time graphics the video processor is a TMS99188 that is a mouthful made by Texas Instruments it had 16k of video RAM Display is 256 by 192 in 16 colours. There are 32 user-definable user sprites. I hadn't initially thought that this thing had sprites, but yes it does. Sound is uh, SN76489A. <laughs> Another Texas Instruments chip, uh, 4 channels, sound. Memory 64K RAM, 32K ROM. Um, initially I think 24k of that ROM was accessible and there was some jiggery pokery to get the rest something I don't understand I, I don't get the technical stuff uh, software made it, it could use tapes or cartridges or in fact floppy disks um, I will get on to that in a bit the 512 has as I said 64k of RAM this was expandable to uh, 512k hence the name 512 they originally sold for 315 pounds the MTX 500 has 32k RAM and originally sold for 275 pounds while the RS128 and I've never actually seen one of those had 128k and was expandable to 768k which was damned impressive for the time now there were some notable differences between the MTX computers and their contemporaries. Externally, this case, this is not plastic. This is aluminium, anodized aluminium, and it is, it's, it's lovely. <laughs> it is, it, it, I cannot explain to you how nice this thing looks in the flesh. You just won't be getting that from the video footage but it is a gorgeous machine uh, they've got a full travel keyboard the reputation is uh, very very good uh, any literature you find on it will say that it is a fantastic keyboard with really nice feel and maybe 30 years ago they were but right now this one is a little bit sticky I mean if it was a bike the chain would be squeaking and would want oiling it's I mean you can't oil keyboards but that's what this one feels like it needs it's a bit rough internally their 32k ROM was very impressive they included things like a built-in assembler built-in disassembler and debugger called panel a forerunner of hypercard called noddy um, I don't actually know what that means <laughs> Um, support in basic for windowing you, you could uh, you have basic commands which could open system windows and more hardware sprites than most computers of the day the uh, MTX can accept ROM cartridges containing different programming languages the most popular being uh, Pascal from Highsoft now I mentioned floppy disks earlier there's a very very expensive peripheral called the FDX system which added 5.25 floppy disks or Winchester hard disks and CPM 2.2 operating system in benchmark tests the MTX performed better than the TRS-80 Model 4 Atari 400 and 800 Commodore 64 and TI-99 4A though it was slower than the Acorn BBC Micro which you would expect because for an 8-bit system that was a bit of a powerhouse mind you this test was done using a basic program so you can't read too much into it which is pretty much true of all benchmark tests as not only was it testing the CPU power but also the efficiency of the basic built into the respective computers right then a bit of history Memotech were an Oxfordshire based company founded in the early 80s 
their products were largely RAM expansions and other peripherals for the Sinclair ZX81. They went on to produce the MTX computers, the first of which was released in 1983. They were commercially unsuccessful and the company went into receivership in 1985. It's generally thought that the poor sales of the MTX are what caused the company to go under, but there is more to the story than this. At least there is if you believe Wikipedia. I do need to add that disclaimer because I know you can't believe everything you read on there. Apparently, Memetech were working on a deal to sell 64,000 red MTX 512 computers and the hugely expensive FDX disk system to the Russian education system. Um, as the deal progressed, Memetech borrowed huge amounts of money from the banks and there was a lot of investment from the UK government. The Russians were saying, it, it was out to tender with the Russians, and the Russians were saying, it's our favourite one, we want this one, we want this one, it's our favourite, it's better than all the rest. So the government was pumping money in, the banks were pumping money in, and then when it came to decision time, the Russians said, sorry mate, can't afford it, pulled out. Um, Memotech obviously collapsed, financially ruined. And the knock-on effect of that was the UK government decided to cease investing in all UK computer manufacturing companies. And this is quite possibly you know, heralded the end of the UK computing renaissance, I suppose you could call it. Probably the most notable occurrence in the history of the MTX computer was its appearance in the 80s film Weird Science, where it was used by a pair of teen hackers to break into the Pentagon's computer network. Probably not something it would be capable of in real life, and certainly not something you should try at home, even if you have got one of these. Right, we'll, we'll have a quick look at it. Um, you've pretty much seen everything, but I'll, I'll give you the brief tour. Um, if you've been watching my videos, my game videos from this, here is the legendary BS button. I'm sure it means backspace, but I don't know. <laughs> you got to wonder. Um, the back is interesting. I know there is cartridge port on here, and I'm going to guess that it's that. I could be wrong. Um, because all you've got is an edge connector and there is a ribbon, piece of ribbon cable just there as well which I find curious you've got to wonder how well it was put together now, two standard Atari style joystick ports um, audio cassette input and output microphone, ear, phone TV output there parallel port uh, for the Centronics printer thingy power input there hi-fi not entirely sure what that does obviously some kind of audio output but more than that I don't know monitor output BNC type thing I think you would call that or coaxial or something don't know now this I find weird You've got RS-2321 and RS-2320. But looking inside, I don't know if you can see, there is nothing there. I can see the motherboard from here, but there are no... there's nothing connected. So I don't know. Maybe there is some kind of ed edge connector on the motherboard where you would have ribbons leading to sockets that you put in yourself. I mean, that's kind of the route they took with the um, Enterprise 64 and 128 computers, so I do wonder if that's what they've done here, because uh, currently there's nothing here but a pair of big gaping holes. Interesting. There it is. Let, actually, just to give you an idea of the size of it, I'm going to stick something you'll be a bit more familiar with next to it. That's a VIC-20. It is quite big. It's not especially light, but being made of metal, you would expect that. But it is, I mean, gaming quality wise, it's probably somewhere, it's not completely different to, say, an MSX. 
And allegedly, the guy who designed the MTX said that they, they pretty much ripped off the Memotex design to design the uh, MSX. Um, how much truth there is in that, I wouldn't like to say. But it is a really, really nice computer. Probably because it's so damn gorgeous. Okay, that should do it. Thank you for watching.